Let's add a little spice to the stew with uh, Gerard Cassidy, head of U.S. Bank Equity Strategy and large cap bank analyst at RBC Capital Markets. Gerard, welcome. Uh, what do you make of, of today, uh, specifically in the banking sector, uh, the, the Silicon Valley Bank and other things? How, concern, how concerning is all of this to you? Uh, thank you for having me on the program, Tyler. And oh, always concerned when you see stocks move so dramatically like you saw today. But as some of your colleagues have pointed out, this is a unique situation with a few banks. And when you think about Silicon Valley in particular, you have to remember in 2019, before the pandemic, the company had about $71 billion in assets. As of the end of 22, it had $211 billion. Its securities portfolio went from $29 billion to $128 billion. They, they were the sweet spot for what we saw in the equity markets during the pandemic. As you all recall, the IPO market in 2021 was off the, re off the charts. So this company, unfortunately, had so much money to put to use. They put it into bonds. As you guys talked about, the yields went the other way. And their funding, this is the critical part. And this is where I'm glad some of your panelists have talked about this. This bank is different because they don't have low-cost consumer funding like most of our banks do. So when you look at the Bank America or you look at a regional bank like m and or Fifth Third, these companies have 40 to 50 to 60 percent of funding from small consumer deposits, less than $250,000. At Silicon Valley, that number was 2.5 percent. So they have more interest-sensitive money that needs to have rates um, paid higher to keep that money. And that's tough when the bond market's doing what it's doing. So there, so so to put a point on it, compared with those the banks you just mentioned, their source of funds is what? Very good question, Tyler. The source of funds for the traditional bank is consumer deposits. And think right. about how long it takes to build consumer deposit. It takes decades. And when you think about our checking accounts that we have at our banks, we're not going to leave our banks with our checking accounts. And especially for the deposits that are less than $250,000, those think of mom and pop, grandma and grandpa deposits with $5,000 in them. Those are gold in this kind of rate environment. And Tyler, it's been 15 years since we had to look at the right side of the balance sheet at deposit mix and the banks with the good deposit mix in Silicon Valley didn't have that. Uh, those banks are okay. And this sell-off was unfortunate. It was indiscriminate. So, so Gerard, it, it, but it, it went across the money center banks too. So why, why did this happen? And especially the regional banks, even though, again, I pointed out just the percentage weighting of what SVB would do to that entire index if it sold off 60%. But it, are, are we imputing uh, a bad securities portfolio on a lot of these regionals? But how about the biggest banks with the best balance sheets in the world? Yep, no, you're right. And I think what the market is worried about is, you know, as you guys talked about with the employment numbers coming tomorrow, we have to make sure the Federal Reserve gets this inflation under control. And if we're sitting here in six months and inflation is still at five, six percent, we're not going to see a terminal rate of five, five and a half percent. Therefore, if rates go up much higher, then these bond problems become more of a problem for everybody. But we have to remember that the banks are not forced to sell these bonds. Most of these are governments and agency bonds, and they are not credit risk, but you need the funding, that right side of the balance sheet, to ride it out, and the money centers can. Two legends in, in one night, Tyler Matherson and Gerard Cassidy. So I want to take you down memory lane, Gerard, if you allow me to. September 17th, 2019, we don't talk about it. We probably don't need not talk about it, but... The overnight repo market blew up, and I'm choosing that word. And there's some signs out there that maybe the reverse repo market. My question to you is, that to me was the beginning of what we saw subsequently in 2020. Any concerns in the repo market and what it might be telling us? Guy, not yet, and thank you for your, your compliments. Um, I would say not yet. Certainly, we're watching it carefully. You know how large the reverse repo market has, has become with the Federal Reserve. Uh, doing what it's doing by paying higher rates of deposit there. But so far, it seems to be pretty much under control compared to what you said in 2019. Now, Guy, I'll go back a little further. If you go back to 1980, this is the problem that the savings banks had in New York City is exactly what you saw today with Silicon Valley. Who's got a comment or an idea here? Jeff, uh, jump in. 
Yeah, so you know, my my comment would be that I, I totally agree with what Gerard is saying relative to the dynamics of all of this. I mean, I, I think it's more of a macroeconomic issue more broadly for the banks, you know, versus something here that's going to translate to some problem you know, across all of them. And I do think that today was a little bit of an overreaction. I guess what I would want to know from Gerard is, you know, thinking about the macro economy going forward, how do you think that then translate into bank performance more broadly outside of what we're talking about today? Broad credit exposure, things of that nature. Jeff, you put, Jeff, you put your thumb right on it. it. It really, this is, today, is, it was unfortunate. But it, we'll get through this, in my opinion. And, and it's really all about credit. Every time we've gone through a credit cycle, if it turns out to be really bad, that's when the banks suffered the most. We all remember 08, 09, 1990 was another tough one. 01, not as much. But here, here, this is the key part about this inflation number, because if the Fed has to continue to raise the Fed funds rate to 7, 7.5, maybe 8%, because they cannot get inflation under control, we will go into a hard landing. That means much bigger credit problems. So to your point, Jeff, that is the macro call. We're not there. We're not suggesting that. We, we think they're going to get to the terminal rate at 5 We'll get somewhat of a soft recession. The other thing, too, is that since the financial crisis, the banks have to go through this stress test every year, which is extremely difficult. So our banks, and I think you guys touched on it, they're better capitalized, they have more liquidity, and credit is very strong. And so when it comes, they'll be able to weather the storm. But that is that is what we're watching right now. We're not ready to jump off the ship on the banks to say get out of them because of credit. That's too early. But that is what we are watching.